denomination. St. James is a small a microcosm church in a vast denomination that has been um, in existence for, for well over 200 years. St. James offers a, uh, a unique intimacy and I think that's because of the small membership that we have here. Um, it's sort of like a small family. Everyone is in everyone else's business. <laughs> so I can show that I do put money in the church and what happens? I leave it downstairs. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. We really depend on one another here. Um, we invest in one another. We really love one another. And we're, we're a really tight-knit group here. And um, we trust one another. We're uh, predominantly women. So um, women do play an important part in the fabric of this church. Women have had a powerful voice in this denomination. Let us make our humble confession. <clears throat> Women like oh Harriet God. Tubman and Sojourner Truth, they made their voice known at general conferences, um, and that's recorded in our church's history. Sister Connie, our historian, she's been the one member who has maintained her membership within the church since her youth. Well, black history was taught to us at St. James, and I learned about Harriet Tubman and Sojourner of Truth, Frederick Douglass, who were all AME Zionites, by the way, and others, and our affiliation through the church was just uh, phenomenal. Going to the March on Washington in 1963, it was because of church groups that we went down there uh, and we heard Reverend Martin Luther King, and we were taught our principles uh, for standing up and fighting for civil rights came from the church, came from our belief, our beliefs and our, our faith. That day we express our um, African heritage by coming in traditional African clothing. The fabric is beautiful, it's gorgeous, and um, you know, it's a freeing quality to actually wearing it. I really enjoy it. I feel like more of a woman, so to speak. It has been a tradition of African Americans to wear a sort of Sunday uniform, and that's because the only opportunity for African Americans to dress up was on Sunday. Uh, my, my grandmother, who passed away last year, her birthday. A sister Felix, uh, she's known for her hats. And she would take it and she'd go, and she said, don't I look like a movie star? She said, because you know they ain't got nothing on Big Mom. <laughs> These hats, to me, are my grandmother. So when I wear a hat to church, it's like having her there with me. And I know my grandmother was very good at making sure that everything went together, that everything was just perfect. When I walk through those doors, you just feel a little bit warmer, a little bit happier, and sometimes you smile or you might cry for no reason at all. And I think that that's what it is. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, Preaching is um, an emotional investment. Um, I take a lot of, uh, I have a lot of an energy. Hang in there, man. Amen. Hang in there, girl. Amen. Your blessing is on the way. Amen. Tell somebody your blessing is on the way. Amen. Your blessing is on the way. Yes, Father, we believe in you. See me. Thank you, Jesus. Be moved in the name of Jesus. When I preach, it's, um, it's a humbling experience because what you're actually saying is that you have the audacity to say that God would speak to you. 
and into the life of someone, an awesome God that would use you, a broken, or at least me, a broken vessel, a marred vessel, and that he would use his, speak into my life to speak into others' lives. I normally pray before I preach, and I actually ask the Lord to actually remove me um, and just to kind of use me as his vessel. And that kind of eases the tension that I feel. So I'm very humbled when I preach. Sometimes I'll have an experience and then I'll, what will come to my mind will be a scripture that applies to that experience. You know, Jesus, his teachings were based on well, everyday life. I finally got some time to take it to the car wash. Come on, Michaela. Let's take mommy's car to the car wash. The man stepped up to my window and he said, Miss, how much would you like to pay for your car wash? And I said, well, you know what? Let's get the whole job done. I just want to ride pretty. Now you're thinking, Pastor, what's this got to do with me? Well, you know what? Whatever you put in, you're going to get out. Amen. It's going to cost you more. It's going to cost you more to get the inside done. But I tell you, church, every time after I got in that car, because <laughs> the brushes were going back and forth and forth and then the uh, spinners yeah. were spinning around on the car and the car was moving and shaking. Hallelujah! Lord, right around now, it's going to feel like you're supposed to go right now. I really invest in my children here. Um, they are our future, and um, I do children's moment with them, and they really look forward to children's moment. They run from the pews, they come right up front. We're actually beginning our children's choir, which we've been trying to get up and running now for a year. Sometimes you mess up the lyrics, and it's okay. That's why you keep practicing, practicing. And